Today, Susie Orman is on her hands and knees, people. I'll beg you for this one. Her five-step recession rescue plan, the websites to go to, programs to sign up for. You have 60 days to apply for this. What to do first if you're laid off. Your mortgage, health insurance, lower your monthly payments right now. That is a saving of $2,700. Brand new advice. We never thought we'd hear this from Susie. What? How to create your own stimulus package. Next. This is probably the most important money show we'll do all year, OK? Because today, we're going to show you how to survive and possibly even thrive during this deepening financial crisis. Here with answers is the one expert who saw it all coming. Susie Orman has a warning about something that will affect everyone. Susie says American families are living so far beyond their means that a financial catastrophe is looming. Susie was right. The economy has plunged into the worst economic crisis since the Great Depression. The economy lost another 651,000 jobs in the month of February, which brings the total number of jobs lost in this recession to 4.4 million. That's 15 jobs lost a minute, the highest in six decades. Personal bankruptcy filings jumped 31% between 2007 and 2008, and it's expected to leap another 35% this year. Families are losing their homes at a staggering rate. Every day, another 10,000 homes are foreclosed. In my subdivision alone, we've had probably six houses in the last week going to foreclosure. My husband lost his job in September. Our fear is that we may lose our house, and we're scared. Shelters are full and forced to turn families away, driving many into tent cities, a heart-wrenching reality we showed you in our special report with Lisa Ling. Our waiting list right now is 236 women and children long. And millions more on the brink of financial disaster. I'm definitely scared. I don't sleep at night. I hope that we're not heading into another depression. Currently, I have no savings. My 401k is gone. I'm not working. I've kept up my life insurance policies because I am worth more dead than alive. I'm beyond paralyzed with fear. I'm 50 years old. I've depleted all of my savings. And now I'm going to have to walk away from everything and end up living on the streets in my car. And I'm afraid of what's going to become of me. Wow. I just got little hairs on my head raised just hearing her voice. Uh, we, we know that people are scared. Susie Orman, a trusted voice to millions who are really suffering right now, is here with a five-step plan to show us how to rise above the fear, because that's, that's the first thing we have to do, right, is to take some action. Fear will paralyze you, and there's only one way to conquer fear, everybody and that's through action. And I just have to say this, I love everything the government's doing or trying to do. I love this program, that program, however. There's only one person that's gonna save you right now, and that's yourself. So you have got to get on what I'm calling the Save Yourself Movement. Each and every one of you has to have your own personal financial stimulus action plan, and that's what today is all about. Okay. So like so many of you, millions of you actually, Lucy and Barry from Orange County, California say they feel like they've been caught in the perfect storm of this failing economy. Look. Two years ago, we were on top of the world. I was the director of marketing trade events at a mortgage company. Barry was an operations manager at a printing company. Our combined annual income was over $170,000 a year. We had no credit card debt a manageable mortgage, and sizable amount in savings. Fast forward to today. Yeah. Uh, we've both been laid off twice. We're currently on unemployment. We have $18,000 in credit card debt, including $12,000 in medical bills. And we're rapidly using up our savings. We had all of the safety nets they say you're supposed to have. We had a home equity line. We had credit cards that we never used that were put away for a rainy day. Well, our rainy day has hit. Our home equity line was reduced last year. We received several notices from credit card companies saying, we're going to close your account. 
we've looked at every possible way we could cut back. You look at any sale you can make for groceries. There's no going to movies. There's no social life for you and your wife, because social lives cost money. Looking for work right now is, is something I spend every day doing. I've looked into long haul trucking. I've looked at uh, joining the military, and unfortunately, I'm a little too old for that. This past January, January 2009, uh, little Henry here, when he was just two months old, developed RSV, which is a serious respiratory infection in small children. I didn't want to take him to the doctor because it was a brand new year. We hadn't met the deductible yet. I did go ahead and take him, and we ended up spending the next eight days in the hospital in isolation. There's not much worse than looking at your child and thinking, I'm a horrible mother because I wasn't going to take him to the doctor because I didn't want to pay another doctor's bill. As a husband, as a dad, it, it feels like I failed everybody, including myself. And I'm willing to do whatever I can to make it right for them. Well, Susie says that Lucy and Barry are like the vast majority of Americans who did not realize they were making a huge financial mistake, which is? Believe it or not, you guys, you had done everything exactly the way that Susie would have wanted you to do it. But when you both were laid off, you cut back some on your expenses, but you did not cut it to the bare bones. And you did not cut it to the bare bones because in your hearts, you honestly believed it's not going to last that much longer. I'm going to get another job. It's OK. I did everything right. Mm -hmm. And then little by little, because you had this emergency fund, you kept living your life the way that you were living it, rather than the mistake that we're all making is we are not cutting it to the, um, when I say bare bones, I mean bare bones. So I'll give you an example here with this family, if it's all right, everybody. Now, the reason that I really wanted to talk about Barry and Lucy to all of you today is because I just want you to think about what happened to them. They both lost their jobs. Their both kids got sick at the same time. Everything went wrong that possibly could go wrong. So I just want to show story. you this very, very quickly here. Currently, they're still spending $6,268 a month. Now, that is a lot of money when all you're getting is $3,400 or approximately that amount of money on unemployment, and that ends in two or three months for them. So the question is, how do we cut? Now, they thought they cut pretty well, and they did. You guys, I'm, actually, you know, I'm not giving you a Susie Smackdown here. I'm saying you did what you thought. Let me just show you briefly, everybody. I went through over their statements. And here are the things that I'm asking all of you to look at right now. And so many of you have a landline, a cell phone, internet, cable. Those things, on average, are adding up to over two to $300 a month per family. That isn't bare bones. We need to reduce all of that. You need to reduce your electricity. All of these things here. Second slide here shows you even more things that we can reduce. You know, and I know we have a thing about reduce this. Reduce makeup. It was only eight dollars, Susie. Eight. Eight dollars to those people that we just saw living in the tent city is a meal, Oprah. Okay. It is a day of feeding themselves. Manicures. It is two days possibly of feeding yourself. Remember, food stamps, everybody, is approximately $7 a day. So these are realities now. Now, all of these may not seem like they add up to a, a lot, but they add up to $511 per month. $511 per month on just those little things here and there. So again, I'm just saying, this is the time when you have to go to absolute bare bones. Is what Susie says true, that you started to cut back, but you were still living like you used to live because you thought it would be over soon? Yes, we, we cut back, you know, the basic obvious things that we could cut back on, child care, we reduced the cell phone from what it was, things like but that. If you're in credit card debt, you have absolutely no money, you're living on unemployment, and now we're getting in a situation where their unemployment's about to go away, and when their unemployment goes away and they now no longer have any income coming in, there goes the retirement accounts, there goes this, and before you know it, they have nothing left, and now they are Tenth City. Susie's first step to rescuing yourself during this recession is to live on half. Are you ready, everybody, for this? Oprah's giving a look like, what does that mean? <laughs> live on half, what does this mean? All right, this side of the room 
it happens to be made up of people that have two incomes coming in. This side of the room happens to be made up of single earners. Every one of you is responsible for your own household. I am asking you, while you still have an income coming in, to cut it in half, people. I want this side of the room for you to right here and right now decide between you and your spouse or you and your life partner to bank one of your salaries. Now, you're going to say to me. <laughs> Look at her face. She just went. <laughs> Anna is like, all right. Over here, for those of you that are just bringing in one income, I am asking you to bank half of your income. Why am I asking you to do that? And I know you're sitting here going, I can't do that, Susie. I can't even live today on my income, and you're telling me to cut it in half. I'll right. tell you why. Right. If all of a sudden you find yourself without a job or your partner finds themselves without a job, you are now going to have your income cut by 50% almost immediately, everybody. When that happens, how are you going to pay your bills? When you are freaked out, that is not the time that you go through your expenses and go, should I cut here, should I cut there? Try to see what would happen if recession really hit into your lives. Would you be able to make it? Because again, if you think it can't happen, I want you to not forget Barry and Lucy. Everything went wrong. Everything went wrong. I'm Perfect asking storm. you Perfect to prepare storm. for that today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, Barry and Lucy, we thank you because we can all learn from what you did and what you didn't do. And here's the thing I just have to say very quickly. Please don't judge yourself by the fact that you're not making money, you can't provide. We judge ourselves by the money we have. We have made one of the biggest mistakes in life. We judge ourselves by the money we don't have. It's equally as big of a mistake. We aren't judged by what we make, our job titles. We are judged by who we are and how we show up in the face of adversity. We are judged at how do we show up when we have to. That's what's important, everybody. All right. So everybody is, do you see how still everybody went when you said? <laughs> we haven't died. Are we there said, anymore? Wait, 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 listen. Are, are you still here? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when she said, I want everybody to live on half, everybody went like this. Yeah. <laughs> but do you all understand why I want you to? Yeah. Who's willing to try it? Uh-huh. <laughs> and try it for how long, do you think? <laughs> I think you should try it for six months. And the reason that I think, oh. Oh, oh. Uh, <laughs> but and the reason is, chances are, it will take you six months to eight months to one year. Lucy hasn't worked in one year now, everybody. Barry, how long has it been? Uh, December 1st, I was laid off. All right, I can see people are thinking about, maybe I'll try a little bit. <laughs> we'll be right back. Step one, live on half. We'll be back with the other four steps. Back in a moment. Coming up, Susie says the rules have changed, her surprising new strategy for stashing cash, and how to prevent credit card companies from shutting down your account. That's next. Financial experts agree that cash is king during tough economic times, which brings us to Susie Orman's second step in rescuing ourselves during this recession. Stash your cash, she says. Why is cash yes, so important? Yes, cash is important because did you not see in the very first example when we were seeing the video footage with Barry and Lucy that what happened? Their credit cards were being shut down. Their home equity lines of credit were being reduced. We told you this a long time ago. You did say that it was coming. That's right, that as the economy was going to get worse, the credit card companies were going to be afraid that all of you would not be paying your bills. And since credit card debt is unsecured debt, everybody, there's nothing securing it. They can't come and take your car away from you or your home away from you. They, what are they going to do? Therefore, when you pay off a credit card, what are they doing? They are closing it down. So therefore, at the time in life when we need it most of all, credit cards are no longer available to you. So what will you do if you lose your job and you don't have any cash that you stashed? Oh, you will be in serious trouble. Okay, Cindy from Georgia is joining us from her living room with a question for Susie. Cindy from Georgia, hi. Hello. Hi, your question for hi. Susie. 
Yeah, I was laid off from my job, and I was just wondering, I am going to receive a severance pay, but I was wondering, with that money, should I pay off all the credit card debt that we have and just keep the extra, or should I keep all of the money for an emergency fund? All right, again, let's go to our little magic screen here. Cindy, currently, you have approximately $6,600 in monthly expenses. But all you have to your name right now is $6,000 in a savings account. She's going to have $8,000 in her severance pay. But please notice, everybody, she also owes $6,000 on a credit card. I'm going to tell you something that really, Oprah, maybe this will shock you as well. I am changing advice that I have been giving for all these years. Forever in a day, Ms. Orman has been the get out of debt queen. Pay off your credit card debt. Pay more than the minimum. Whatever you do, don't have credit card debt. Are you ready? We're about to change that. Cindy, if you take some of your severance or the money that you have in savings and pay off your credit card, that will leave you $8,000. Now, you have monthly expenses of $6,600. That $8,000 left will last you one and a half months. So do you understand why, in this particular case now, I am going to tell you I want you to stash the cash. I do not want you to pay off your credit card debt. I want you literally. What? To uh, what? All right. If Cindy took her $6,000 and paid off this $6,000 in credit card debt, what do you think this credit card company most likely will do? They will slam that credit card down shut so fast she won't even know what hit her. That's why you have to have a stash of cash, everybody. You see that? So let me just show you. Here is my advice for everybody. If, in fact, and this is new advice for all of you, if, in fact, all you have is a small emergency fund, I've been saying forever, you need at least an eight-month emergency fund. Other people have been saying, all you need is three months, six months. Are you kidding? It's going to take eight months, possibly a year, if you lose your job, to possibly get another one. So yeah. if all you currently have is a very small emergency fund and you have unpaid credit card debt, like Cindy has, $6,000, here's my new advice. You are only to pay the minimum amount due on your credit cards. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you applauding? Why? <laughs> I'm in the same boat as the woman that was on that screen. I have about 6000 in savings. I had a severance package of about $8,000. I have about $6,000 in credit card. So your name's Cindy? Oh, <laughs> and, I, and that was why I came to this show. It, it was a godsend, because I, too, thought if I paid off the credit cards, I would be out of debt, and all I'd have is my mortgage and normal stuff. You gave, I love you. You gave me my answer. <laughs> Credit cards to wait for their money. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank and I will say a very different answer than we've heard forever. Forever, from especially from me. Here's the thing. This is your recession answer. This is my recession answer. When the economy changes, Good financial advice has to change along with what's happening in the economy. So a good financial advisor, which I happen to think I am, right? <laughs> but changes according to the economy. So everybody, the minimum only on your credit card, stash the cash till you have at least an eight-month emergency fund. But the key is here, stop using your credit cards. No longer credit card usage, everybody. Pay for things in cash. Thank you, Cindy and Rose. <laughs> Step two. OK? So live on half with step one. Step two, stash your cash. We'll be right back. Back. Coming up, Susie reveals how first-time homebuyers can get thousands of dollars back in their pocket. That's next. OK, Susie says number three to surviving this recession is make the stimulus package work for you. Allison from DC is joining us. She was recently laid off, has a question for Susie. Allison, hi. Yes, I was laid off a couple of weeks ago, um, and I wanted to continue my health insurance, but COBRA is so expensive. It's going to cost me about $470 a month uh, to continue my health insurance. 
Um, I hear that the government is now going to be subsidizing COBRA. Is everyone eligible for that? Girlfriend, so here's good news for you and everybody else as we go back here one more time. First of all, for those of you who don't know, let's look at what COBRA happens to be. COBRA is just some technical name that they have given for those of you who are currently covered with health insurance at your corporation. If you happen to get laid off, you lose your job, you have 18 months where that company has got to cover you with health insurance. However, what is the cost of COBRA? It's expensive because it would have cost her 100% essentially of what her employer was paying. Now with the new stimulus package, guess what? Here's the good news. Allison, all you're going to have to pay is 35% for nine months. After nine months, it goes up to 100%. However, everybody listen to me. You have 60 days to apply for this. Going into your HR office, signing up for it, you have got to go there. Even if you were laid off last year after September 9th of 2008, you can go back and apply now for COBRA and have your COBRA, your monthly payments, reduced. How much does this save? Our dear Allison, are you ready, my love? Here we go, everybody, take a look. Allison was currently paying $470 a month. She was paying 100% of her COBRA payments. Now, Allison is only gonna pay 35% of that, which is essentially $165 a month. That is a savings over nine months to Allison of approximately $2,700. That is a huge amount of money. That's what's in the stimulus package for you. You have to make these things work. 60 days to apply, Allison. Get your little booty into that HR office and do so, okay? I will, for sure. Good girlfriend. Thank you, Allison. Uh, thank you for Allison from DC. <laughs> Alyssa is also joining us from New Jersey. Hi, Alyssa. Hi, Oprah. Hi, Susie. Hi. Hi. Your question. My question for you yeah. is I've been renting on and off beach houses, apartments for 20 years, and I'm ready to buy. And I hear about this stimulus program, um, a tax incentive for first-time home buyers. Will I qualify? Yes, you will qualify. Let me again very quickly tell all of you what's in the stimulus package for those of you who want to buy. And some of you may want to. It is an $8,000 tax credit, people. Now... Who's it for? It's not for everybody. You have to qualify for it. First time home buyers is for only homes purchased in 2009. And you have to qualify for it income wise. You cannot make more than $75,000 a year of adjusted gross income if you are single, $150,000 of adjusted gross income if you are married. If that is what your situation is, guess what? you qualify for an $8,000 tax credit, which means if you owe $10,000 on taxes, you're gonna only owe $2,000 after it's over. It comes off your actual taxes that you owe everybody. Now, I looked at all your numbers. You know, so it's not just, do you qualify for the $8,000 tax credit? It's how much of a home can you actually afford in your particular situation? Doing all of your numbers, girlfriend, the most you can afford is a home for, are you ready? Yeah. About, yeah, about $200,000. Oh, really? Yeah, $200,000 is your limit. Otherwise, you are gonna get yourself in trouble. Okay, thank you. But that's the good news. That's, that's the good, good news. news. $200,000 is your limit. Okay. Thank you, ladies. Coming up, if you're about to fall behind on your mortgage or even lose your home, Susie explained how you can keep a roof over your head. That is next. Important. Back in a moment. Skyrocketing foreclosure rates and plummeting house prices have brought this country to the brink of financial disaster. Susie Orman says that step number four is make your home affordable. Lynette and her husband, Derek, are Skyping from Houston, Texas. Lynette, your question is, hi. Hi. Hi, Lynette and uh, Derek. We're both employed, and we want to know, because of our uh, huge mortgage and a lot of debt, um, is it ever okay just to walk away from your house and foreclose? Oh, Lynette, hopefully 
you don't have to do that. You see, everybody, that's exactly what the administration is trying to prevent, where people like this just simply get up and they walk away because they don't know what else to do. So there are things you can do, and where you need to go right now is to understand that there is a home loan modification program that the government put into place on March 4th. And therefore, who is that modification for? It's like people like you possibly that can't afford the home that you're currently in. Maybe you're behind on payments. Maybe you owe more money on the home than it's worth. Derek, is that you? Is that your, is that your situation? Well, yeah. look, he's cute. He's cute, <laughs> isn't he? You're a cute boyfriend. Anyway, um, so it's like, just like you. So here's what I would suggest. The way that you find out if you qualify for a loan modification is go to the government's website that currently is makinghomeaffordable.gov. There, you will literally find questions that you will answer, and you'll find out, do you qualify, do you not? But after that, you're going to have to contact the bank and find out, will your bank give you that loan modification? Now, in this situation here, we did the numbers for you. Actually, your bank was contacted. And according to your bank and according to makinghomeaffordable.gov, the website, your savings in your particular situation will be approximately 200 some odd dollars a month. Now, one may say $200 a month. What good is that going to do? I got news for the two of you. You need to reduce your monthly expenses by $1,400 a month in total. Oh, look at her face. I know. <laughs> look at her face. That sounds like a lot of money. I got to tell you, I went through your expense sheet, and I found $1,400 that you could probably reduce. Look at his face. <laughs> no, that he's is. like, you did. I know. <laughs> but where you start with is with doing a loan modification, because we don't want you to walk away from your house. We don't want people in the United States to lose their homes. And the government is trying to do everything right now and make it possible that if it makes sense, you'll be able to stay in your home. And that's what it looks like you may be able to do. So what else do the new housing bill offer? Well, there are many people out there that just don't have any equity in their home. Maybe they bought a home, and now home prices have decreased. So you don't have any equity. But maybe your interest rate is at 6 and a half, 7%. You're on time with your payments. Everything is good. But you want to refinance like you. Is that your situation? Mm -hmm. Girlfriend, go again to makinghomeaffordable.gov, and it will ask you a few questions, and you'll see if you'll be able to do a refinance. Key here is your loan has got to be held by Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac. Susie has truly only scratched the surface here. Go to makinghomeaffordable.gov to find out about your eligibility. Coming up. If you've been laid off recently, find out how you can get an extra $100 a month from Uncle Sam. $100. Our country's unemployment rate recently soared to a 25-year high for the 12 and a half million people who are currently unemployed and for the millions of you who will be laid off in the coming months. Susie has information to help keep you afloat, and that is? That is, I know a lot of you never thought in your wildest dreams, I'm sure that's true for the two of you as well, Lucy, yeah. Barry and Lucy, that you'd have to go and get unemployment as if there's some disgrace about it. There isn't. You've paid for it, your employer has paid for it. It is an entitlement that you actually deserve. But you have got to take an action, and you have got to apply for it. So here's what you need to know about unemployment. First of all, you have to be laid off. Don't go quitting your jobs right now, everybody, <laughs> and thinking you're going to get unemployment because you quit. No. You have to essentially be laid off. What you also need to know, there's no time limit. To apply, you can apply any time you want. However, let's say you apply for unemployment and you are denied. You have a specific period of time, it's usually 20 to 30 days, eight, each state is different, that you have to actually appeal the judgment. And here's the good news. You can apply online. So you don't have to go down. You don't have to do all these things that could be embarrassing for you. You can apply online. That's 
what you need to know. Now, how much are we talking about when it comes to unemployment? It actually can amount to quite a bit. First of all, the amount is approximately 50% of your income. It will depend on your state and where you live, but you can essentially gather that you're going to get 50% of what you're currently making. Number two, how long does unemployment last? In most cases, it lasts 26 weeks. But in areas of the states and the country where unemployment is really high and it's impossible almost to get a job, this can be extended now all the way up to 46 weeks. Got that? So you need to check that out. So obviously, some of you will qualify for an extension those extra 20 weeks. And now, part of the new packages out there is that you will get an extra $25 a week in your unemployment check, which is $100 a month. And if you think that isn't a lot of money, oh, go talk to somebody who doesn't have a penny coming in, and $100 is a serious sum of money. So don't go mocking an extra $25 a week. Is that a lot of money, my dear Barry and Lucy? Yes. Yeah, it is. So that's essentially how unemployment works, but to get it, you have to take the action step to put this in place, and you should do it as soon as you can. Do not wait. If you lose your job, go and apply. Do you hear me? 35-year-old Tara in our audience has a couple of questions about unemployment. Tara, where are you? Stand up. Hi. Hi. Um, I moved to Chicago six months ago for a job, and I was laid off two weeks ago. Um, I did accept a severance package, which was equivalent to about one month's salary. Will that affect my unemployment adversely? Not at all. Severance has nothing to do with unemployment. The only thing about unemployment is, did you get laid off? Did you not get laid off? You did? I did. Correct. Guess what? You should go get unemployment. Great. And is uh, unemployment taxable for next year? Yes. Unemployment, whether you guys know it or not, Unemployment is not just this free lunch, it is taxable. However, the other good news that has recently happened with the stimulus program and the other things is the first $2,400 is tax free. Is tax free. So $2,400 okay. now currently of unemployment is tax free after that. Oh, you are going to pay taxes on it. Okay. Thank you, Tara. Coming up, a retired reverend whose faith has been tested after losing his life savings. That's next. Having faith that all will be well and we can all get through these difficult times must be hard to believe for so many of you who've lost your job or your home or your life savings. Like retired 65-year-old Reverend Walker, the, even the Reverend's faith's been tested. I retired in 01. My investments and my income from my investments was greater than my expenditures. I was 100% secure, I had no worries. But since October 07, things have turned in the reverse. What can we do now that we've lost half of our savings? I'm 65 years old, now on Social Security. The bottom line of my concern is that at my age, I may outlive my resources. I feel sad, I feel disappointed, I feel abandoned. I feel hurt that the economy has taken the turn it did due to circumstances beyond my control. We are approaching First Evangelical Lutheran Church where I served for 16 years in my first parish. The tables have turned. I feel like I'm the person who needs to be counseled. I wake up in the middle of the night with cold sweats and I'd have to talk myself down to go back to sleep. Well, I worry about him. I, you know, I think he's depressed. He won't admit he's depressed, but uh, yeah, it's just affecting his health. Which worries me. I'm sorry. <laughs> We've done everything right. <laughs> everything right. We've given more than we received. And I, I'm not in this world to make piles of money. I feel we are victimized by people and powers beyond our control 
of people who, in a very real way, robbed me and many Americans of their life savings. It's kind of interesting that as a retired minister who served for over 30 years, about the only thing I have left that's real to me is my faith. But faith doesn't put bread on the table. We'll talk to Reverend and Mrs. Walker when we come back. I know a lot of you feel the same, so we'll be right back to have that conversation. Yeah, it doesn't, it feels un-American. Yeah, it feels like. So, what do you want to say? Yeah, here's, here's the reason, everybody, it feels unfair, is because the people that did this, and I'm sorry to say that I stood here months ago and said, why does this happen? Because of the deceit and the lies and the crooks in Wall Street, mortgages, the banking industry, they got away with it. They got away with it. And Oprah just said, yeah, it's un-American, isn't it? It feels un-American that the bad guys win, you know, because we all grew up where the good guys win. Yeah. And that's why in everybody you hear, you heard it with Lucy and Barry, we've heard it from our Skypers, we've heard it from Reverend and Mrs. Walker. When you've done everything right, you weren't overextending your credit cards, you were paying your bills on time, you did everything right, it really feels unfair. However, whether it's unfair or not, doesn't matter. It's not going to turn back the hands of time. So our very last action step, I want you all to look at what you have, not at what you had. What keeps you locked in to anger and sadness is looking back at, I had a home that was worth $500,000, now it's worth $200,000. I had a stock portfolio in my 401k that was worth $600,000, and now it's worth $150,000. If you continuously look in the rearview mirror while you're going forward, you're going to get in an accident. And the victim of that accident is going to be you. So this is a situation, Reverend, where you and every single person in this audience and every single person watching today, we have got to have faith that everything happens for the best. We have got to believe from the bottom of our hearts that God does not know how to take, that God only knows how to give. And maybe the gift that we are being given today, maybe the gift is what do we value in life and what isn't important anymore. And if you simply, everybody, look at what you have, not at what you had, so you don't compare, you'll feel stronger, you'll have more energy, and you'll be able to turn this around. Anger and feeling like you're a victim is a main internal obstacle to wealth. If you can look at this as a blessing, and I'm not saying it's easy, I know, you know, but if you can do that and have faith that everything happens for the best, just maybe. What do you think when I say that? My faith in my provider and creator has not faltered in the least. My problem is to renew my faith in the system, in the government, in programs that's going to bring some of us out of the dark into the daylight. And what I would say to that is this, who you have to have faith in is yourselves. You have to have faith that the two of you together are strong enough to do what it takes to make sure that eventually you're just back to where you want to be. So again, the rule here to everybody is, and I'm actually begging you on this one. In fact, I'll get down on my hands and knees. I'll beg you for this one. Can you all look at what you have and stop being upset? about what you had. Can you just do that? We could do that. We could do that, America. Because being grateful for what you have, being grateful, the principle is that when you are great, when you can see what you have, you, unblo you unlock blessings to flow in your life. You know this, Reverend. You unlock the possibility of other things flowing towards you. You don't block your own blessings, yes? Yes, we are blessed with family and friends and a wonderful history of relationships with people, and that's been a very stabilizing force. Uh, 
We have been very prudent in the past and we can even be more so in the future. And we have each other and that means the world. The world, wonderful. We'll be right back, back in a moment. Yes, we can. Wow, I think this was some of your best work today. Thank I you. thought, let's give a round for Susie. I thought this was some of your best work. If I were y'all, I would pay attention to her because she saw it coming. She was saying in 2007, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. And uh, some it of us now listened. came. Yeah. It is here, everybody. Now it's here. And how long do you think we're going to be here? I said it before, you know, things will get better, get worse, get better, get worse. Next two or three years, it will start to kind of turn around. I'm so sorry to say that's kind of what we lost in what's recently happened. That hope, I believe, will be restored. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Some of your best work. I'm excited to give you an update about our own YouTube channel. Now you can find new videos every day. They're the kind of videos that will make you look at life differently. They may even make you laugh a little bit. Subscribe to the own channel today, and we'll see you on YouTube.